volunteer. Remember, 100% of donations benefit local area charities. Become a champion for our community at TackleHunger.org. Josh Fuller Band. He's going to be uh, his CD release party this Sunday. That's part of our Christmas party. He's going to perform. He and his full band. Got a fiddler. She's apparently a little cutie patootie. I hadn't met her. I've met Booch, the uh, the uh, drummer. Booch should get a ding, Ramon, because Booch is good. He's, he's the one that played the, the Trahan, which is like the Cajon, the, the drum you sit on. But they, it has three drums. It, has, it even has a snare drum. It's a very neat deal. And uh, Kevin Klein is one of the best guitarists you'll ever meet. Fantastic. The whole band. Shirley Q. Licker is going to play. Oh, it's going to be a high time. If you just tuned in this Sunday, it's the Michael Berry Show Christmas party at the House of Blues downtown. But it's a strict guest list because we got way more requests to get in than we can possibly accommodate. So I'm asking you, send me an email, and uh, we'll pick them. In the first sentence, tell me that you've contributed to the show in one way or another because that's who we're going to give priority to. It just is. 713-212-5874. Did we finish off with BJ? BJ, was I through with you, sir? Um, I, I didn't want to take up any much, very much more of your time, but, you know, wanted to say one, one other thing, and that was, you know, for people ask me why we homeschool, the first response is, number one, because I love my kids. And number two, because my wife and I decided we wanted to have more influence to, as you were talking about, help build the character and not just the uh, head knowledge of the education aspect about the kids. You know, BJ, I've said this over and over again. When people ask for my advice, which for some crazy reason they do on occasion, I'll tell them. I was always top of my class in math, science, English. The most important thing you can teach a child, though, the most important part of their success is teaching them confidence and self-awareness. It was a woman in my law school class. First week at law school. You're nervous because you've all been the top of your class in college, but now UT Law School, you're talking about the best of the best. There are people that went to UT Law School because they got a scholarship that also got into Ivy League schools, and a lot of them that went to Ivy League schools undergrad – there's a lot of people that grew up very uh, rich, and then there are some kids that grew up poor, and you're nervous, and here you are. And for the first time in your life, you're up against people that you can't win against, and you're scared. And after class, we'd all go down to this little cafeteria area, and you're, you're, you're mildly de- neurotic because it it's, must be, you know, like the first day of going from being the Heisman Trophy winner to playing on a pro team, and you realize – Man, these guys, I might have been good at the last level, but I don't know if I can make it at this level. And we go in there, and it's the second or third day, and and there is this particular woman in our class, and she's reading the Investor's Business Daily, and she's reading the stock quotes. And one of our buddies said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm just checking my portfolio to see if it's up or down. You know, it could go up or down $100,000 in a day. I I like to make sure everything is squared away. Now, this was pre-computers. We didn't have computers. There were, there were desktops, but you didn't walk around with a the computer then. You couldn't look at your stock portfolio on your phone. So there she was looking at the Investor's Business Daily, and one of our peers said, what are you doing? She said, just checking my portfolio. I mean, it could be up $100,000 either way at a given time. I just, I just need to know whether I need to buy or sell. Just, just checking out my portfolio. We all kind of looked at each other going, was that whole exercise designed to impress us? Was that supposed to make us think you were rich? which this person was, great. Was that supposed to make us think that you're a savvy investor? Fantastic. But what it really made us think was that you're an idiot. It's like the guy who pulls up to you at the stoplight, and he's back in the back seat. He's cocked all the way back to the back seat. He's got his hand over his 
stirring wheel. And he's got his music playing real loud, and he's busted out the speakers, and he looks over at you and kind of gives you that. He kind of pokes his nose up in the air. And he thinks that you think he's the coolest cat ever. And all you're thinking is, I ought to call your parole officer right now. Lack of self-awareness. If you can teach a person to understand how what they are projecting to others is being perceived, number one, and secondly, not to care. Now, that might sound contradictory, but it's not. Here's the thing. You should understand that when you wear a long, nasty, scraggly beard that is untrimmed, you should be aware that, for instance, when I stopped at the gas station yesterday, the Chinaman working there refused to give me the keys to the bathroom and said, Only for customer. I said, I am a customer. I'm about to buy a couple. Only for, only for customer. Yeah, I'm about to buy something there, fella. You need me to buy it before I go make TT? I don't mean to be rude, but you're not making me like you right about now. Now, mind you, I had a homeless man's beard. Yes, very unkempt, very nasty. It's growing up onto my cheek. It's like growing toward my eye unevenly. It's filthy. It's just nasty in every way. It is the true sign of an independent man who doesn't care what other people think about it. I'm thinking to myself, I am wearing a Rock Mount vintage custom wear Western shirt. I mean, this is a shirt that Porter Wagner would be proud to wear. This same shirt William Shatner, William Shatner wore two movies ago. In a, I, It's not a ding if I didn't say I was hanging out with him. I'm telling a story about a human being that everybody knows. Ramon, you're just heavy on the ding today. That's a heavy pour. So, anyway, I'm wearing, it's like I'm wearing, I'm wearing really nice jeans, a nice pair of custom boots, and a rock mount shirt. Custom vintage. I look like I'm about to go on stage and rock out with my out and he's not even gonna give me the bathroom key what kind of ignorance is this dude in gay anyway so you should be aware that you are projecting let's say with my beard you are projecting the image of an unkempt human being i'm also refusing these days to cut my hair up top and it goes wild i am very well aware that people who don't know me are judging me as dirty hippie people who do know me are going holy smokes what's happened to michael I am aware of that. I'm not accidentally thinking people will think, he's a clean-shaven, nice, good-looking guy. That's super nice. I feel comfortable around him. But to have the awareness to know what you are projecting to other people, but the confidence not to care if it bothers them. If you can teach those two things and fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the earth and all that is in it. And what is more, Ramon, what's the next line? You shall be a, a man, my son. If you can teach your kids that, they can learn all the rest. People get so upset. Does Crockett speak English? Well, not yet. But but he's five. And he don't speak English. What are y'all going to do? Well, I'm just making sure that he's retaining his Amharic right now and developing his Amharic so he doesn't, for the rest of his life, speak five-year-old Amharic so that he doesn't lose the language of Ethiopia because it's going to be a cool thing for the rest of his life that when he meets someone from Ethiopia, you know, of all the African nations, actually of all the nations of the world, the most distinctive people in the world. I can pick out an Ethiopian in a crowd, and I can't pick out other people. You might know that someone is Asian, but for most of you, you don't know if they're Korean Vietnamese, Chinese, or Japanese. I mean, within reason. Sometimes you can tell. That's rude, Ramon. But my point is, I want him to hold on to that language. He'll learn English. Maybe not this year. Maybe not the next. Maybe he'll be behind in his English. But in time, he'll catch up. He'll graduate speaking the same English. Your kids are going to learn the basis of algebra. Some will be good and some people won't. Some kids will take trig and they'll excel and some won't. Some kid will learn some kids will learn engineering and some won't. But when you actually study people that are successful at 50 years old, you will find that a number of people that turn out highly successful, particularly those that rise to the top of the heap, were bad students. School didn't appeal to them. 
and you will find that the valedic, valedictorian, the, the guy who performed the best in the school setting, and I did, is typically not the most successful in life. They paint within the lines. They're on a salary working for a guy that was a D student. Look it up. Michael Berry. Uh, to pull our economy. Teleprompter free. Oh, goodness.